Hello everybody, in this video we are going to be debunking the claims and arguments against the Catholic Church by the Seventh-day Adventists in regard to the Sabbath. And these are some of their best and most quoted arguments. In fact, you've all seen the videos and the lists online where they say that the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath and they admit to changing the Sabbath. And then they give about 30 quotes to prove that the Catholic Church and Constantine specifically changed the Sabbath. But I and Catholic Truth here actually went through each and every quote and fact-checked them. And what we found is going to shock you. And in fact, it may even anger uh, Seventh-day Adventists just because they realize that they've been trusting in these sources for so long and they've been trusting in these claims and what they've been told is most often a lie. It's not even true. Many of these quotes, as we're going to see, aren't even actual quotes, first of all. Second of all, they don't even come from the Catholic Church sometimes. Others are just partially quoted, erroneous, out of context. Honestly, it's a miserable mess of quotes that people just slapped together. I haven't seen anything like this since the Jehovah's Witnesses when we fact-checked their quotes, and they quote themselves, and they just, their quotes aren't even real sometimes. It's actually scary that some people can be leading so many Many people astray. Yes, it's good that they're trying to back up their claims, but as we're going to see, the quotes and the facts that they use to back up the claims against the Catholic Church are just dubious. And we're going to prove with facts that Constantine did not change the Sabbath and that Christians had worshipped on the Sabbath centuries before Constantine all the way back to the earliest Christians and back to New Testament times. So, without further ado, we're going to go through all of these quotes. Well, not all of them because there are a few that I couldn't find anywhere. Like, anywhere. Search the whole entire internet. You just won't find these. <laughs> but <clears throat> we got the majority of them and we're going to go through a lot of them. And there's so many errors and there's so many problems with this that this video is just going to be too long. So we've split it into two parts. This is going to be part one. We're going to read the quotes and then we're going to discuss the problems with them and show you, Seventh-day Adventists and non-Seventh-day Adventists, Catholics and non-Catholics, that these quotes that they use against the Catholic Church just don't hold up in any way, shape, or form. Please pray for them because many people are going to have their eyes open. Please pray that God's grace will work in their lives. All right, so let's get into these quotes and see how they hold up. This first quote comes from Collier's Encyclopedia. Let's see what it says. Constantine published the Edict of Milan, granting freedom of religion in the empire and establishing Sunday as a day of worship. Now, Seventh-day Adventists will say, see, this is proof that Constantine changed the Sabbath. Constantine took what was Holy Day and he changed it to what's now known as the Sun God or the Sunday. Like, that's their claim, Sunday Sun God. But notice it didn't say that he changed the Sabbath. Notice it just said that he granted freedom of religion in the empire because Catholics had been persecuted for 300 years by the Roman Empire, and he allowed them to worship freely. And secondly, he established Sunday as a day of worship. Not even the day of worship, but a day of worship. Not the day, not a replacement of the Sabbath, but a day. Also notice that this is only in his empire. This, was, this wasn't for the church. This was just for his people. The church had already worshipped on Sunday for centuries before Constantine. I mean, literally, you can read the writings of the earliest Christians and see that they already worshipped on Sunday. So I have to ask the question, if Christians were worshipping on Sunday centuries before Constantine, then how did Constantine change the Sabbath if they were already worshipping on Sunday? I'm not going to read them all, but just so you can get an idea, just so you don't think that I'm making this up, I'm going to give you a few quotes from the earliest Christians long before Constantine showing that they worshipped on Sunday, and it had nothing to do with the sun god. It had to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In 229, that's like a century before Constantine came to power, Origen says this, Hence it is not possible that the day of rest after the Sabbath should have come into existence from the seventh day of our God. On the contrary, it is our Savior who, after the pattern of his own rest, caused us to be made in the likeness of his death and hence also his resurrection. 
St. Justin Martyr, in 155 AD, he says this, We all gather on the day of the sun, for it is the first day after the Jewish Sabbath, but also the first day when God, separating matter from darkness, made the world. And on the same day, Jesus Christ, our Savior, rose from the dead. St. Ignatius of Antioch in 107 AD says this, Those who lived according to the old order of things have come to a new hope, no longer keeping the Sabbath, but the Lord's day, in which our life is blessed by him and by his death. Now, St. Ignatius was the bishop of Antioch in Acts chapter 11, when, where the Christians were first called Christians in Antioch. He was the bishop of Antioch. He was a follower of John the Apostle. He was a disciple of John the Apostle, and he said, we no longer keep the Sabbath, but worship on the Lord's Day. This is a bishop of the first century. So according to Seventh-day Adventists, Constantine invented this and to worship the sun god in like the year 325 AD, 317 AD. But the reality is we can see that Christians have always worshiped on the Sabbath all the way back to the first century. Even Barnabas in the first century, 74 AD, says that we keep the eighth day, Sunday, with joyfulness, the day also on which Jesus our Lord rose again from the dead. So let's start with this first quote. It, and this comes from uh, the whole works of James Taylor. The primitive Christians did keep the Sabbath of the Jews. Therefore, the Christians, for a long time together, did keep their convocations upon the Sabbath, in which some portions of the law were read. And this continued until the time of the Laodicean Council. Now, he claims this whole work comes from Jeremy Taylor, okay? Now, if you look this up, Jeremy Taylor isn't a Catholic. This, the, the whole thing about the Seventh-day Adventists is these are supposed to be proof that the, that the Sabbath was invented by Constantine and admitted by Catholics. Like Catholics admitted this, and yet this isn't even a Catholic source. So, and in fact, it's an anti-Catholic source from someone who's trying to disprove the Catholic Church. So how is anyone supposed to find that credible? Let's go to the second one. Then the spiritual seed of Abraham fled to Pella, on the side of the Jordan, where they found a safe place of refuge, and could serve their master and keep his Sabbath. And of course, they quote their source, which comes from a Siblu ecclesiastical history. <laughs> now, there is no such person in the world named a Siblu. They didn't even get the source right. Like, they couldn't even quote the correct source. What they were trying to say is Eusebius. It's not even close. Eusebius is ecclesiastical history. And if they can't get the source correct, how are they supposed to get the quotes correct? As we're going to see, some of these quotes aren't even correct. Like, they're not even right. Now, I have Eusebius's, some of his works here in our library, and I pulled up uh, Eusebius is book three, because that's what they quote, book three, chapter S. Now, I looked through the whole thing, the entire thing, and I even searched a control F for it online, and there's literally no quote. This quote does not exist in Eusebius's work. So I'm not sure where they got it or if it's even real, but it literally does not exist. This was even proven by other people because when I was trying to find it for the life of me online, I found other people, Catholics and non-Catholics also, who said that the quote does not exist. It's not part of Eusebius's work. So what they're claiming that Eusebius, who was a 4th century Catholic historian, they're claiming he said this, but in fact, it's not found in any of his works. Therefore, it does not exist. They've completely made up or fabricated this quote or got it from somewhere else and messed up the quote. But the bottom line is it doesn't hold up because it's not attributed to Eusebius and it's not even real. Nobody can even find it. Now, you can find quotes to Pella, who's mentioned here in the work of Eusebius and maybe in the works of Josephus as well, because she was Jewish and it was mostly, or she seemed to be mostly in regard to the Jews. Like all of this was in regard to the Jews. None of it was in regard to the Catholic Church. None of it was in regard to Constantine. Nothing. Like literally this quote does not exist in any of these works. Josephus, uh, Eusebius, or anyone else. So it's totally dubious. So let's look at this next quote. First, Sabbath, 
a Hebrew word signifying rest, Sunday was a name given by the heathens of the first day of the week because it was the day on which they worshipped the sun. And this supposedly comes from the Bible encyclopedia, John Eady. But again, <laughs> I don't know if these are from different people or what, but they couldn't even get the name of the encyclopedia correct. It's not called encyclopedia. It's called the Bi Biblical Cyclopedia. They called it the Bible Encyclopedia, but it's called the Biblical Cyclopedia. If you can't even get the name of the source right, and literally you can't even read words on the page, how are we supposed to trust you with the rest of the quotes that you're not going to get right, or you're going to miss completely, or change, or just put in there whatever you want? It's not trustworthy, and it's not credible. But let's look at the quote, because as you notice, they put a bunch of ellipses in there, and they left out a lot of important points. So let's see what the quote actually said from the actual source. It says this, This was the title given for the Jewish day of rest, a Hebrew word signifying rest. Since the Christian era, the day of rest is properly called the Lord's Day, because it is commemorative of Christ's resurrection from the dead. Sunday was a name given by the heathens up to the first day of the week because it was the day on which they worshipped the sun. Now, notice there's a huge difference in all of this when you actually read the context seriously. They said that the heathens worshipped the sun and that they made it seem like the Sabbath was changed because of that. But notice the actual quote said heathens worshipped on that day to worship the sun, but we commemorate Christ's resurrection from the dead. That's why Christians celebrate it, not to worship the sun, but to commemorate Christ's resurrection from the dead. And that's what all the earliest Christians, which we quoted earlier, Barnabas, Ignatius of Antioch, Justin Martyr, all those early Christians, they said the exact same thing. So this is corroborated with this source, which they failed to quote properly, and with the earliest Christians. Now, Seventh-day Adventists seem to make a big deal about the Sabbath being on Sunday because it's on, like, the sun god's day. <laughs> they don't seem to understand that every day was named after a pagan god in those days, okay? Like, Wednesday was Woden's day or the day of Odin. Thursday was the day of Thor, who was the god of thunder. You could literally go through every day of the week here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and they're all named after pagan gods. So are we all worshiping pagan gods? Are we all putting our, no matter what day we worship on, are we putting it on different days because we want to worship on that day because it's a specific god? No, of course not. Just because they're named after gods by the pagans doesn't mean we follow that. Yes, we still use their wording, like Wednesday and Thursday, Thursday, God of Thor, we don't worship them. We just have that in our calendar because it's always been there. Same thing with this, uh, the Lord's Day. We worship on the Lord's Day because we worship the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We worship him. We celebrate his resurrection and power and victory, the conquering of sin and death, and so on. Now, the next quote uh, I couldn't find anywhere. It says it comes from the Catholic world, which isn't even an authoritative source, but no, I couldn't find it anywhere. There's no way to substantiate it. So let's go on to the next quote. Now, this one actually is a real quote from uh, Eusebius. <laughs> Whoever did this quote actually got it right. It comes from Eusebius in the life of Constantine, chapter 18. So here's the quote. It appeared an unworthy thing that we should follow the practice of the Jews who have impiously defiled their hands with enormous sin and are therefore deservedly afflicted with the blindness of soul. Let us then have nothing in common with the detestable Jewish crowd. So this is proof in their eyes that the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath just because they didn't want to have anything to do with the Jews. Unfortunately, Seventh-day Adventists didn't actually bother to actually fact check this quote or look it up or to see the context of it because it has literally nothing to do with the Sabbath. This quote has nothing to do with the Catholic Church <clears throat> on Sunday, the Lord's Day, Sabbath, or anything else. This is about the date of Easter, the celebration of Easter. You can go look it up. I gave you the quote. You can go look it up for yourself. It has to do with Easter. In fact, there were some Jews who were celebrating Easter, but they were celebrating it twice a year, 
twice a year instead of once like all Christians who universally celebrated Easter, you will notice that the word Sabbath isn't even mentioned in the quote. It's not even mentioned because it has nothing to do with the Sabbath. It's literally the church is telling uh, people not to follow some of the people were going by what the Jews were doing and started celebrating it twice and having Easter more than once. And they were saying, why are you doing that? We have nothing to do with the Jews. They're like the old covenant. We're in the Christian covenant. Do what Christians do. So keep the date of Easter the same universally and don't follow what they follow. So again, nothing to do with the Sabbath has everything to do with the date of Easter. This whole quote, it can just be thrown away because it doesn't prove their point. And for the record, if they can't even understand what these quotes are about and they haven't taken the time to research them, then why are you trusting them? Why are you trusting them? Can you see that they're dubious? Can you see that most everything that comes out of the Seventh-day Adventist research lab against the Catholic Church is just not true? Let's go on to the next one. This one is about Constantine and it says, On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in the cities and let all the workshops be closed. To me, this sounds redundant because we already covered this in like the first or second quote when he published, Constantine published the Edict of Milan, granting religious freedom, Collier's Encyclopedia. We already dealt with this one. The fact is, this was around centuries before Constantine. Constantine merely made Sunday in his empire a day of rest. Now, it was already that for the Catholic Church. It was already worshipped on by the Catholic Church. As we've read, the earliest Christians going back to the first century, they already worshipped and celebrated on the Lord's Day, which was Sunday. So literally, Constantine didn't change anything. The next quote is this. The popular complaint against the Christians was, they despise our sun god. They have divine services on Saturday. They desecrate the sacred earth by burying their dead in it. And this comes from Truth Triumphant, um, Persia. And this was 40 years of persecution under Shapur. Now, this is just another example. Like, we haven't had a single good quote yet. Or at least not one that's been in context or had to do with Sabbath. None of these... Hardly any of these have had to do with anything they claim. This is just another example of that. This literally has nothing to do with the Catholic Church or Constantine or the changing of the Sabbath or anything. This has to do with, this isn't even a Catholic work for the record. This is kind of one of those examples where like, we're going to use it no matter how bad it is, if it kind of sort of fits our point to make it look like we have a credible point. That's what they're doing here. Because this is a work that's not written by Catholics. And the quote isn't even talking about Christians, but it's talking about the Walden Seas. Now, the Walden Seas were a 13th century heresy. Okay, they didn't even teach Christian doctrines sometimes. And they're trying to prove that the Walden Seas held to the Sabbath. Okay, let's grant the fact that maybe they did. Even if they did, whoopee. They're a heretical group of the 13th century. That doesn't mean that people in 12th, 11th, 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, 3rd, 2nd, they did because they didn't. All of them unanimously worshipped on the Lord's Day, Sunday. I mean, going back from the 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, all these people worshipped on the Lord's Day. Yeah, maybe there was a sect here or there that did it, a heretical sect like the Walden Seas. I mean, it doesn't even make sense, but they're trying to prove that the Waldensians had successionism, like that go back to Christians. True Christians were the Waldensians, which doesn't even make sense because they haven't studied their beliefs and teachings. If they had, they'd realize that many of them are not even Christian and they would not be using this group at all. The fundamentalist Baptists and their successionism does the same thing. And People haven't done the research. They haven't done the research. And it's really sad. They're just quoting these. And then other people quote them and other people quote them, but nobody's looked them up. Nobody's done any deep intellectual research. And it's truly sad. Now, this quote comes from Council 20, Canon 29 of the Council of Laodicea. Okay. Now, this is an actual Catholic council. So let's see what it says. It says, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day day, but the Lord's day they shall especially honor, and as being Christians shall, if possible, do no work on that day. And that's about 365 AD. So again, they're proclaiming what the Catholic Church has already believed for centuries, but it's already been believed. But does this prove that the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath? No, because we've already worshipped on the Lord's day back to the first century. So this is just reproclaiming that. 
Quite frankly, I don't really see a problem with this quote. Nowhere in the New Testament do we see any admission to worshiping on the Sabbath. Nowhere does Jesus or Paul or Peter, James, John, Luke, anybody, nowhere, ever, nobody in the New Testament after the resurrection tells us to worship on the Sabbath. Now, this might not be a problem except for the fact that we are told to keep all of the other Ten Commandments in the New Testament except the Sabbath. We're not told to keep the Sabbath. Except, and even in fact, Paul said, don't let the Jewish people judge you on feasts and Sabbaths because they were giving Christians a hard time about it. And Paul said, don't let them judge you about that. The council says that we don't Judaize. Who are the Judaizers? The Judaizers were those who were, some of them, many of them were converts to Christianity, but they were saying, supposedly, they were saying that you needed to keep the law of Moses to be saved. That was one of the big fights in the early Christian church, in the New Testament, especially with Paul and in the book of Acts and the church councils. They were fighting against the Judaizers. Check out Acts chapter uh, uh, 15. And they were talking about how people must be circumcised and keep the law of Moses to be saved. And Paul spent a considerable amount of time in the New Testament saying that we are not obliged to follow the law of Moses anymore. That was Old Testament. That was the old law that's passed away, that's been fulfilled. I mean, Romans 3.28 says that we are saved by faith, not by the work of the law. Same thing with Galatians. It says the same thing. It says, Corinthians says we've been freed from the law of Moses through the law of Christ, which is the new law. So we're not obliged to follow that old law anymore because that was the old covenant, the old testament, the old rituals. And the Sabbath falls under the law of Moses. In fact, it was one of the biggest parts of the law of Moses, as we're going to see in the next quote. We'll talk about this more in a second. But the bottom line is that the Judaizers were trying to make Christians be Jewish. They were trying to keep to the Jewish old law of Moses, like the Sabbath and circumcision. And the Christians were saying that doesn't apply to us anymore. And that's all that the church is saying here is that we shall not Judaize. This has been the teaching since the first century. We're not going to go backwards like those Judaizers were trying to get the Christians to do in the first century. There were still Jews trying to get us to do that in the third and fourth century. We're not going to do that. We're not going backwards. We're keeping to the Christian tradition that had been there from the beginning. This quote is still about Judaizers, and it's a whole different quote, but we're going to continue the kind of the thought that we were just talking about. But let's read the quote first. Protestantism, in discarding the authority of the church, has no good reason for its Sunday theory and ought logically to keep Saturday with the Jews. American Catholic Quarterly Review, January 1883. Now, this is one of their favorite quotes to prove that the Catholic Church had the authority to change the Sabbath. That's what Seventh-day Adventists say. And that Protestantism, as Catholics are supposedly saying, if they were being honest with themselves, if they went by the Bible alone, they would go by the Sabbath of the Jews. And this proves that not only does the Catholic Church change the Bible, that she changed the Sabbath. That's their claim. First, this is just a magazine, so <laughs> it's not a credible source. It's not an authoritative source. And things that are in magazines may or may not be accurately portrayed, and it may or not be true. I mean, Seventh-day Adventists have quoted Catholic magazines in the past that have had erroneous information in them, and the magazines corrected that information, but the, the Seventh-day Adventists never corrected their information on that. So let's just throw that out there. But they're also ignoring the context of this quote. Again, they just look for things that fit their belief, but they don't care what it actually means. And this should shock Seventh-day Adventists and other people who do this in other religions as well. I mean, literally, if somebody doesn't care about the truth more than just, oh, this looks true, so we're going to put it in, so far, none of these quotes have been true. They've all been about something different. Hardly any of them have even been about the Sabbath. And not, some of them aren't even by Catholics. So there's so many dubious quotes here, and this is just another one. So let's look at the context and see what it says. Similar to the last quote, this, if, if you go on to actually read the article, which I did, they only read this one line and then left it. I actually read the article and read the information of what it was talking about. So what it's talking about is it's talking about what literally what I just said. The earliest Christians, many early Christians, still wanted to go back 
and keep the law of Moses. They were saying that you needed to be circumcised and worship on the Sabbath and things like that. And in fact, that's what Galatians was really condemning when it says we are uh, saved by faith apart from works of the law. It's literally condemning that when we know that because uh, Paul uses, I think it's something like 22 times it condemns circumcision in the book of Galatians because the Jews were trying to go back to that. And in Galatians chapter 5, he says, if you go back to the old law, you are severed from Christ. You are cut off from grace. Basically, you apostatize and you throw Christ underfoot and you mutilate his blood. Like, Paul gives really strong language to the early Judaizers who wanted to return to the old law or said you needed to keep some of the precepts of the old law in order to be saved. This article was saying that the the, the Sabbath was enforced most strictly uh, with the prophet Nehemiah and that no part of the Mosaic law was more distinctive than the Sabbath. That was like the pinnacle of the Mosaic law. And it's saying that as part of the Mosaic law, Christians don't need to follow that anymore. Source, the New Testament. (laughs) Half of Paul's letters are written against this. So this is the context of the article that was literally completely and entirely left out. If you just read their quotes, it might make it seem like they have points. But when you go back and actually do the context and see what it's talking about, their quotes just disintegrate. The article here goes on to say, the Catholic article goes on to say, that even at the First Council of Jerusalem, which we mentioned in the last quote, Acts chapter 15, go read it, it was saying, and it's talking about Judaizers, okay, and those who want to go back to the precepts of the law of Moses. What did the apostles decide needed to be done. What were the bare minimum of what needs to be done? It said that they needed to, this was what was necessary, necessary. Notice the Sabbath isn't listed on this list. But what was necessary, according to the book of Acts, was to abstain from the meat of strangled animals, to abstain from things sacrificed to idols, and from blood and fornication. Now, of course, (laughs) you know, these were disciplines back in the day, but the Sabbath isn't mentioned. And in fact, as we said, Paul told people not to let them judge you about the Sabbaths. This was the authoritative decree of the apostles at the council. And they specifically said that we don't need to be circumcised either, because that was another big one that the Judaizers were trying to push. Conveniently, they left out this part of the article, which says that there's not the slightest evidence anywhere in the book of Acts that Christians kept the Sabbath. Again, there is not the slightest inference anywhere in the book of Acts that any Christian kept the Sabbath. Now, that's important, and this quote totally left that out. There's a lot of context missing here and things that would disprove the quote if they actually included it all. When people say that the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath, what it means is that early biblical Christianity worshipped on Sunday. Nobody in the Bible worshipped on Saturday. Nobody after the resurrection worshipped on the Sabbath. They worshipped on the Lord's Day. They took collections on the Lord's Day, which you would do on Saturday if they worshipped on Saturday, but they took the collections on Sunday because that was the Lord's Day. That was their day of worship. That was their special coming together day. So this article mentions the primacy of the Lord's Day in the New Testament along with Christian teachings, and it's talking about how the changing of the Sabbath was actually what the apostles did, and they were the ones who worshipped on Sunday and not on Saturday, and we don't see any evidence of worship on Saturday in the New Testament or in the book of Acts. Now, some people might say, but you don't see, you know, evidence of that on Sunday either, which is why we go to the historical record and you see all Christians worshipping on Sunday, right From the time of the apostles, they were all worshiping on Sunday. Now, I know this is huge, just like a bomb to Seventh-day Adventist theological foundation. But for those who are honest and will pick up their cross and follow Christ, you will realize that you have been duped so many times over and over and over again by this religion that was started in the 1800s. Okay, let's do one more quote before we go on to our next video in part two. This is one of the Seventh-day Adventist's top favorite quotes to use against the Catholic Church. It says this, You might read 
the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of the Sabbath. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday. And that comes from Cardinal Gibbons, the faith of our fathers. So Seventh-day Adventists say, yes, this is absolute proof that the Catholic Church admitted to changing the Sabbath and that it's not biblical because if you did go by the Bible, you would go by the Sabbath. Except that we just disproved that because the Sabbath is Old Testament law of Moses, Mosaic law. But the New Testament, we saw they don't worship on the Sabbath. So there's a problem here that, you know, they say, oh, it's not in the Bible. There's many things that are not in the Bible. This literally just proves that the Bible alone is not true. It's a false doctrine, or solo scriptura is not a doctrine. Because you won't find that we should worship on Saturday in the New Testament. You find all the other Ten Commandments, but you don't find that we should worship on Saturday. You won't find that. You also, also won't find the word Trinity. And you could hardly find the teaching of the Trinity, that God is three co-equal persons and, you know, but one God and the whole explanation. You can't find that in the Bible. That comes down to us through tradition, primarily. You also won't see the Bible alone in the Bible. I mean, literally not everything is found in the Bible. So this whole um, thing is fallacious from top to bottom. I think Cardinal Gibbons may have been more accurate if he said that the Old Testament enforces the religious observation of Saturday. The Old Testament. He said the scriptures. I know what he's getting at because he's trying to disprove Protestantism and he's trying to show that you can't go by the Bible alone because there's no specific reference that says to worship on Sunday. But all of the references that we do have of history and scripture show that the old law of Moses is done away with. It's fulfilled in Christ. We have a new law now, and we don't need to follow the old law. And in fact, if you do follow the old law, as we just showed from Scripture, you were cut off from Christ. The Judaizers were cut off from Christ because they wanted to keep these things. So there's a whole lot of evidence in Scripture for the Christian teaching of the Lord's Day. However, what he's saying is you won't find one line that says, keep the Lord's Day. But you also won't find anywhere in the New Testament where it says, keep the Sabbath day. You'll find all the other Ten Commandments, but not keep the Sabbath. So, for going by the Bible alone, the whole thing just goes up into the air because it can't be proven, because the Bible doesn't have enough information either way. Hence, the Bible alone isn't true and can't solve doctrinal matters because it doesn't even speak on all of these matters. And that's why the, Jesus started the Catholic Church to solve these matters. I mean, the church was up and running and worshiping on Sunday long before the New Testament was even written. The church was preaching the gospel, saving souls, making doctrines before the New Testament was even written. So the church was there first with the authority of Christ, preaching and saving lives and bringing people to heaven. And we could see in Acts chapter 15, the apostles were making doctrines before the New Testament was even written. So they were going by uh, authority given by God outside of Scripture, which shows that Scripture alone just isn't true. Thanks so much for watching this. I hope it was helpful for you. This is only part one. We're going to be making a part two soon. And I hope that you see that these quotes against the Catholic Church don't hold up at all. Not, not even a little. I was hoping something for a little bit more intellectually honest, intellectually satisfying. But these were just cobbled together, Mickey Mouse together, just to try to prove a point that can't be proven. It's why no Christian in history believes what they believe. In fact, I mean, Seventh-day Adventists weren't even the original originators of this. And the Seventh-day Baptists worshipped on Sunday, too, right before then. And Alan G. White had ran, run into them and kind of took that for herself. But the bottom line is, this isn't a teaching from Christ. It's not a teaching from the Apostles. It's not a teaching of the New Testament. And we can see that the Church has the authority to speak for Christ. I mean, Jesus said, what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. He's speaking to the leaders of the church, the apostles. And what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So what you do will be ratified by God. And the Bible also says in Luke 10, uh, 16, that if you don't listen to the authority of the apostles, then you reject Christ and you reject God. So do we need the Bible? Absolutely. Do we need the church to properly interpret scripture? Absolutely. What's the other alternative? Tens of thousands of contradictory denominations, Seventh-day Adventists, Baptists, Episcopalian, uh, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Lutherans, Calvinists, Presbyterians, all the rest of them, thousands of them, all coming up with different teachings 
based on their own personal and private interpretations of Scripture. That's not what Christ called for. That's not what, if you study ch church history, that's not what you'll see in church history. So I really hope that you see that what people say about the Catholic Church most times is not even accurate when you actually look at the sources. This is why I've said it once, and I've said it a million times, that anti-Catholics, not just non-Catholics, anti-Catholics, people who hate and want to destroy the Catholic Church, you always have to look up their quotes because they're almost always wrong or out of context or partially quoted just to make it seem like they can prove their point. But when you look them up, they don't mean or say what these people claim they mean or say. So thanks for watching. Please share this with the world so that everybody can know, especially if you know Seventh-day Adventists, please share it with them because they need to know the truth that's going to set them free. Also, if you would like us to come to your parish to give apologetic seminars, uh, or if you would like online seminars, you can meet with us one-on-one -on -one to do apologetics to learn. You can see that down in our description show notes below. Uh, if you would like us to come to your parish, catholictruth.org. If you would like to see our new merchandise, catholictruth.org. And if you'd like to support our um, PayPal and Patreon, support our ministry, help us defend the church and bring more souls home, please support us monthly, yearly, one time, make a one-time donation. You can check that out on our Patreon and our PayPal. We're growing fast and we need your help. And I want to thank all of our patrons all out there who allow us to do the work we do and to reach the amount of souls that we reach daily. So thank you all and God bless.